All right, welcome back to another episode of the Cody Tucker Show. As always, I'm your host, Cody Tucker. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest. Going to recognize him from Old Survivor Season 46, Ben Katzman. How you doing, man? What up, Cody? It's an honor to be here. Dude. Your love of pop culture is legendary. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> Dude, absolutely, man. Hey, I I mean, I got, obviously got to start off. I was such a huge fan of you this season. I mean, I've been watching Survivor. Never missed an episode since Season 1 when I was like, seven years old maybe um i mean it is like it's the greatest show ever made without it oh doubt. dick i mean and, listen i think it falsely gets billed as a reality tv show and it like denigrates its quality to some people I'm like it is definitely the greatest show ever made it's like i don't know it's like if, it's like if people watching was a competitive sport <laughs> you know what i mean dude it's the the mixture of because like a you know with a game show, there's a right and wrong answer. And that's kind of the gist of it. Who can get the right answer quick like or the fastest? But with Survivor, like you were playing, like people are the questions. Like you're yes. having to play people, which, and you know, add so many layers to it. Like it's the greatest, which, I mean, I know it's been billed as that, but it's like the greatest human experiment. Oh, yeah. Ever. And I also think like what people don't understand when they're watching is like, I don't know if there's such good thing as a great survivor player because it's all about who you get cast with. Yes. You know? And yes. that's what makes the story so interesting. That's why it's 46 seasons on. It's so strong. It's like, it's the characters. It's the mix of people, you know, like, and exactly. I think our season especially was such a big group of characters that hmm. it was so unpredictable, you know, and we've had a few seasons where like, Yes, there's a few standouts, but you can see where the story's going. It's like, I feel like on season 46, it was like everyone was so crazy. It was like yes. almost like a Pulp Fiction style editing where it's like, <laughs> of, of where's the story going to go? You Dude. know? Well, it's like also, you know, obviously you make it to the finals, which yeah. is insanely difficult, obviously. So, you know, congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. For sure, dude. But also, had you had been cast 10 years ago, you may have won or you may have been the first person voted off. Like even playing the same way you played just now, yeah. like it is strictly based on the people you're with. Like it, it doesn't matter. So that's oh, why and I also want to just emphasize. It's not just the people you're with. It's like, yes, there are great players always, mm -hmm. but so much has, you're watching 18 storylines edited it into a one hour, maybe a 90 minute, once a week, 18 people for 26 days, you know, there's so much that doesn't make it that so much has to go right for a move to open up. Yeah. And I think like the people who usually make it to the end are perceptive. They are people who can clock the room and it's almost like playing chess in a bizarre way. Like, especially on a season like ours where it's like, there were so many people playing so hard, they failed to see the big moves right in front of them. Yeah. And that's why so many people went home with idols in their pockets, believing yes. time and time again, Q was going home when he wasn't, you know? Like, right. Right. Yeah. Like, and that's, you know, obviously your experience of it is yeah. so much different than my experience of it. Because totally. I'm just the guy watching on TV. I can't and even objectively watch my season, but it is hilariously I, sick. That's <laughs> what I was going to ask. Like, I like going back and watching it. Are you just like, man, this is, damn, this is me really doing this. Like, this is crazy. Like, I mean, how long ago was it? Did it wrap? Like, I mean, how long has it we been? We got since? back at the end of June of last summer. Oh, so it's a year. So I like mean, this basically. time last year, I think we're probably on like day one or two of the game. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. I can't imagine. I mean, how long does it take for the paranoia to wear off? Like, do you have that in your day to day life now just because of. Well, know, it's like, weird, you... right? Like, I think. You know, I think I'm a unique case. A lot of people mm -hmm. didn't get to see my gameplay, but they did see a part of my story. Mm -hmm. But. Like, I, I was just on another podcast today and I was saying that the, the, the storyline I wish was shown that goes beyond anything I did, any move was that the final four was no mistake. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a coincidence. It looks like it was, maybe to the viewers. It looks like that to me when I'm watching it, but right. 
our season was filled with so many cutthroat people playing hard, trying to win. They were all taking out their number ones and everybody they didn't take seriously, which was me, Liz, Kenzie, Venus, Charlie, all made it to the end. Yes. You know, and you don't get that. You don't do that by coincidence. Like we all had to be an influence and something that was going on. And I really felt like there was this group underdog mentality Mm -hmm. that doesn't get seen a lot. You know, usually you get the edit of one underdog or something like that. So I had this great camaraderie out there that didn't make me feel so paranoid that I know a lot of other players deal with. I had my own set of problems like the night terrors and panic attacks. But once you start eating and getting back to society and like, I'm very grateful. I get to play guitar and express myself and process my emotions in a healthy way. A lot of people don't have that. I always wonder if somebody went through what I went through and had to go back to an office job, would they go insane? You know? Yes. So the hardest part coming back more than the paranoia was like, even with your worst enemy in the game, you feel this trauma bond. And you get back and you have a hard time relating to your friends, your parents, your partners. Mm -hmm. And how do you start letting other people back into your life? Because you're on this island. Even when you get voted out, you don't have your cell phone. You don't know what's going on in the outside world. Yeah. You really only have each other unfiltered. You're starving together. You're playing together. The cortisol, the adrenaline, the insanity. Coming back, it was like those first couple weeks – I felt like this one Twilight Zone episode where there's like the space colony, you know? (laughs) Yeah. The colony doesn't get on the ship back to Earth. I was like, I kept thinking, I was like, am I that guy? I refuse to want to readapt to society, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, because you're getting stripped to, I mean, the bare minimum and actually in some ways less than the bare minimum. So, I mean, it's you and whoever it is you truly are as a person. That's what gets yeah. shown. Like, that's why. And I feel because, like, what I went through, I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't eating. Yeah. I was stripped down to the core. And I'm glad I wasn't, like, a snarky dude. <laughs> like, I was still making jokes and pop yeah. culture references and making yes. Jeff laugh. Like, I was still me. And it was, like, that was probably the best takeaway it was, like, you know, deprived of all your comfort, you find out who you really are, you know, it's like, I don't know if some other people can say that, you know, Uh, you see the Twitter beefs, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. So (laughs) survivor, big brother edition. Dude, I mean, it's, it's also, I mean, I think you came across very endearing to I mean, the vast majority of people who watched it, if not everyone, like, dude, no problem. Like, you know, win or lose, you know, and I, I've always kind of gone back and forth. Um, Like, especially when I was younger, I would always get mad at who won. So I'd be like, they didn't deserve it. They shouldn't have won. It should have been blank or blank. And now I'm kind of at the point where whoever wins deserve to win always, no matter what, because they knew they made the right, whether it was a final tribal council, whatever it was. This season, you know, there, there is some discourse, you know, it's like, The truth is Kenzie did clock it at tribal. She had the relationships like she slayed it, you know, like not all of tribal was shown, you know, like, um, and she was a social threat. Like people did want her out when we got to the merge and Mm -hmm. then she won immunity. And then the secret six emerged and she managed to fly under the radar. You know, it's like, and there is a lot of discourse. Like did Charlie play the classic strategic game hard? Yes, you yes. know, like at least from what I saw on the island versus what was shown, like, right? For sure, you know, like a lot of people didn't take him seriously. You see that in the edit, you know, like there's a scene where Q's telling Tevin and Hunter, "We're gonna let Charlie in, but if he's in, he's gonna, he's not smart enough to make a move." And it's like this dude found his way into every power dynamic and was a part <laughs> of every move. Like, yeah, that is just as much a social threat without having the heat on him. And yes. You know, I felt kind of the same way, even though that wasn't shown. And it's yeah. like, it is, uh, yeah, it is, it does come down to that. You know, it's like, and I think somebody like you who's watched 46 seasons, mm-hmm. you can see beyond what's just being shown and spoon fed to you. Like, right. you know, it's like a lot of people are surprised by Gabler's win. And yeah, 
And I fully can blame what I think is how that was portrayed because you meet Gabler and he is a rambunctious on top of the world, loves yes. life. Dude, it's like, who wouldn't want that guy around? You know Gabler. what I'm saying? Gabler like, is amazing. So he was on like a, a while back yeah. um, to talk about season 40. It was after the end of 46. He came okay. on to kind of talk about that. N one of the nicest people I've ever talked to. Yeah, and, and I'm like, it totally checks out. And I think yeah. that is you know, to Kenzie's benefit too. It's like, they show how like chillable she is yeah, and how perceptive and how fun she can be. And I'm like, you know, it's like that social game, that social element was missing in those 60 minute episodes. Yes. That now you get to see a lot more of, you know? Right. And, and that is, yeah. I mean, that is one of the things that I love about it going to the 90 minute episodes. I mean, I, because whenever you do see the 60 minute episodes, there is so much where you're like, wait, now, how did yeah. that happen? How did we get from point A they to point Z? They tend to focus Z? on the strategy, yeah. Like, right. rather than Exactly, and that's what I want to see. Like, I want to see the, like, the social interaction, see, like, okay, how is this person really, yeah. like, people like Tevin, who I, and Q, so, like, Q, especially, whenever you're watching it, I actually really liked how he played because i in my so i actually go back and forth so part of me is like <laughs> Let's either, go. Dude, i part, mean i have some light to shed on that too okay you know? so so just my take on q part of me is uh this guy's lost his mind out here and there's something wrong like he's wanting to go doesn't know what he's doing he is sabotaging himself other yes. half of me is like this might be the greatest underhanded like Ala Gabler move there ever is like a guy who's saying like I don't even want to be here take me out and he's able to somehow dodge every bullet now well, granted I could just be getting shown that but I that's think what you're getting seen. shown that and okay. to Hugh's credit I do think he believes whatever is coming out of his mouth like he thinks it and says it right yeah. but something that wasn't shown and I've beaten this topic to death in a lot of mm -hmm. podcasts is one of my biggest moves of the season was you don't see this, but Q and Maria sunk my game hard at the merge. Yeah. After Tim went, you know, there's a secret scene on YouTube. And then I couldn't wait for Q to blow up his game. Uh, after that vote where he pretended he wanted to quit, which I really think he just wanted to avoid being blindsided. Yes. I went to Q, you know, in the midst of a few moves being made. And I said, all right, dog, like you want to be here. I don't want to go. I know we've got onto a bad foot, but everybody knows I dislike you the most. So I'm yeah. going to sell it at tribal because if I'm a dick at tribal, other people can go home and look, no idol got played. And if you watch it in the edit, mm -hmm. every time before we go to vote, I say like some of the harshest shit I've ever said about somebody. <laughs> and then Jeff goes, well, it's time to vote. And it just looks harsh, but I yeah. never wrote his name down. And a lot of people have talked about, you know, that the reason they didn't play their idol is because they fully believed that Q smoke screen. And yes. I was like, the loudest one, I didn't tell anybody other than Charlie, yo, I'm actually mm. kind of cool with Q. I'm just going to be loud at tribal. And, right. you know, and it's like out of context, it looks like he's just floating by, but he yes. was still playing. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. There is like a part of me that thought that that may be the case that I was like this guy, because, like everyone I know who watches it, like family and stuff, they're like, Oh, I'm, I want Q gone. Like he's, you know, yeah. he doesn't even want to be there. And I'm like, I think there's, there's no way that that's true. Cause he would just walk if, if yeah, it was really I, that bad. Totally. Like, you know? I do think there was a point where he did feel sunk, but like then yes. he, him and Maria linked up super hard and he got, they had wind in their game, but there was definitely like, they show like a, a few seconds of it. Like who would have thought we're together now at like final yeah, seven, but right. That was the only time I said it out in the open, but it was mm -hmm. like that. Like I talked to Q so little, I would only check in with him once a day and be like, selling it tonight. Don't take it personal. Right, you know? right. <laughs> and in fact, like the vote where he goes home, which was my proudest move of the season, didn't even get shown properly. Yeah. Was we put on a fashion show before Tribal. So if uh -huh. you watch the Q vote, Kenzie's wearing my vest. 
Yeah. Charlie's wearing my headband. I painted Liz's rice jar and put a rope around it. Uh-huh. And I painted a dollar sign and we made like the rice's power advantage. Yeah, yeah. And I like put Maria in my overalls because I wanted <laughs> Maria to be blindsided and have my overalls. I'd be like, got you, dude. Yeah. And we walk into tribal and you see me carrying this flag, but like I'm also wearing the Q skirt with a ton of paintbrushes in it. Yeah. And you see me carry this flag, but then it just disappears. But we open that tribal and I gave jeff a flag that i painted with a picture of my dog splinter that says yeah. together we can chill mad hard <laughs> and it was the one day i was super chill with q in the open and yeah. he did not see it coming he was yeah. like he thought that was it I was like and i had told him was the day i'm cool with you is the day you're going home <laughs> and like you know like he went home and to be fair <sighs> like the smoke screen was so heavy, nobody wanted to hear what I had to say at tribal, but Hugh corroborated all of that on the jury. And so I give him yeah. props for not being bitter about that one. Yeah. Oh, dude. So, so I mean, you mentioned all of that in Final Tribal, right? Like, like I mean, I did. It doesn't but like, get shown. Yeah, like, it doesn't get shown. Yeah. I definitely did. And like, okay. they put this line about how, you know, I'll be fine without the million. But like, that was at the tail end of like, Dude, I just sat there for however long it was with people laughing at me and cutting me off and not hearing what I wanted to say, what I had to say. Right. And there was a lot of times I did say everything I just told you. And people called me a liar or said that isn't true. And Q stood up at tribal and said, he's telling the truth. I can corroborate it. Liz corroborated it. I even told Hunter he was going home before we went home. And Hunter was like, actually, that checks out. Ben did throw my name out there to my face in a very friendly way. So it was like, I played the game, but their minds were made up. And like, right, every right. time I started getting to a point about my gameplay, time. So, uh, you know, yeah. I think, and it's no disrespect to Kenzie. It's also no mm-hmm. disrespect to Charlie, but their sure. minds were made up. I don't think anybody was actually swayed, you know. Really? Uh, you don't think, uh, like, between Charlie and Kenzie, like, people voting one of the one way or the other you don't think that that was swayed? i don't know i think the majority was what it was right you know uh it's like enough has come out about what happened at ponderosa and stuff For like sure. that and i want to keep like my trash talk to what happened in the game you know I'm yes friends. yeah for sure i'm friends with nearly everybody you know like yeah. i i'm always open to conversation you know like that's why i was worried when i do these podcasts if yeah. somebody's mad they can just come and talk to me you know but I really yeah, do think sure. like, you know, I, I don't I wouldn't say everybody's mind was made up in terms of like this is it, but I think it was definitely made up that was gonna be one of those two. I don't think anybody was coming in planning uh, to give me a vote. Cause right, you know, right. you don't see how hard I suffered out there. Yeah. I wasn't eat I didn't eat for like nine days, but like I was never on the wrong side of the votes. You know, the no. accidental Kenzie vote, like yeah. I've explained to death, but like I did say to the camera, Venus, you're going home tonight. Uh, yeah. But like after nine days of not eating and you have orange soda and pizza, like that sugar and that caffeine yes. is going to blow you up. And like the plan, they didn't show any of the speech at that pizza party, but Maria and Q sat me down at the pizza party. Like, we want you to be final three with us. Would you turn on Charlie or Kenzie? And Q was supposed to write Kenzie's name down. And he's already talked about this. So this uh-huh. isn't like new information. For sure. but yeah. When I got down, I whispered to Q, yo, I wrote Kenzie's name down. And that's why he wrote Venice, you know? Oh. So, so it just, gotcha. yeah, it was like, that was already the plan. I was like, we're going to be fine. And I think I was already so tight with the final four that it wasn't like, I wasn't too worried, you know, like I knew at all costs, like they didn't want Q or Maria in final three. Yeah. So what were they going to do? Get rid of me? Like, you know what I mean? Right, right. Which again is like perception of like being a goat, you know, like. Yeah. But I had moves, you know, but the, they had to show what they had to show, you know. Yeah. It's, like, it's funny because it's like I watch it back and I'm like, I lived it in the context to everything is there. Like I can just point out everybody was wearing my clothes mm-hmm. and then there's no mention of why. No, you know? like, no. So no, even, I, that day, even that day before we went to that tribal was the one day Q was hanging out. Q and Maria were hanging out with all of us as friends. They had kind yeah. of just stayed amongst the secret six. Right. And right. it was like all day we're like, let's do a fashion show and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, it was like, it was, yeah. Holly Shore Masterclass, if you ask me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah, I think that that side of it is very fascinating. Cause, yeah. 
you know, and not, you know, not the like the bullshit outside of Survivor, like just the yeah. in game, like playing, like and how people get along and don't get along. Yeah. But a lot of it, you know, it doesn't get shown fully and it couldn't. There's no way it could. It'd be, a, you know, I mean, there's some deleted scenes that Survivor does post on YouTube. Yeah. Like my game getting sunk and. You know, what's weird is I watch it back and the the pre-merge, I see all my storylines getting set up, you know, Charlie and I were like this the entire time. Yeah. You know, maybe it shifted when we split for a couple of days around the Timbo, but we really, and you see in that secret scene where Maria sinks my game, like that Charlie mm -hmm. comes and we really pick up there. But then after the Q hide and seek episode, it's like I disappear and you know, I'm watching the first few episodes. It's like, you see me comforting Maria. I was like, okay, they're for sure foreshadowing what's about to happen because that was my biggest beef of the season. And right. you know, I know she's getting a hard time on the internet and I yeah. people chill out on that, but like, yeah. that is what I experienced within the game. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, you know, even at the gem episode, you see me starting to get winded and I have this confessional about, what is pain if not another opportunity to learn the depths of your mind? I was like, they're for sure setting that one up, you know, because I had the night terrors the entirety of the merge, yeah. but it wasn't shown nearly to the extent that it was. And the right. funniest thing was I had the night terrors, but I didn't make it a burden on people. And they make it look like Kenzie took care of me, which yeah. to an extent we took care of each other, but it was the final four was hanging out with me the entire time. It right. was, you know, and that was the beauty of having that issue is the secret six never asked me how I was doing or checked on me. Mm -hmm. So when I would wake up in the middle of the night and go off by myself, I could talk openly about the game to Kenzie. I could talk to Liz. I could talk to Charlie yeah. and nobody would interrupt us. And that's where that's how like Charlie and Maria played the middle, but really kind of only amongst like the real middle there was Charlie because Maria and Q and all those people didn't really care what Liz or whoever had to mm -hmm. say or Venus. And then Charlie would come to me and I'd be like, yo, this is what we're all thinking. And us being that true middle, you watch the Hunter episode, the tip episode, we were like these crucial swing votes that allowed those votes to go that way. Cause Maria wanted Tiff out before even Hunter, you yeah. know? And yeah, and it was like, I had that confessional about Hunter being the T-Rex. And it's like, we shouldn't have a Jurassic Park sequel. <laughs> He's got to go back in the cage. Yeah. What happened was I had been trying to get Kenzie to flip on Yanu since the Tim vote. Because that's when we started hanging out. And she's like, I can't flip on them. And I was like, I knew it was going to be me or Tim. Yeah. And that day where it was Hunter, Kenzie was like, I'm all right. I'm willing to flip on one of us. I got to play my game. And she comes to me and I run to Charlie and Maria and I'm like, hey, Kenzie's willing to flip, but like, I don't want to sacrifice my friendship. So act surprised, you know, which I was like yeah. trying to keep my numbers and do my jury management. But then they, the way they show it is just Kenzie runs to Maria and Charlie like I was never included in the conversation. Yeah. And you watch the next episode and we blindside her by sending Tiff home. And she had no idea that was coming. It's like mm -hmm. that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't that middle playground, you know? Right. Um, especially because I was cool with Tiff too, you know, yeah. like I didn't have beef with Tiff, but I also had to play the game, but she wasn't my number one. So like, screw it, let's play, you know, yeah. like, um, yeah. So, you know, there was a lot of game that was being played and that just goes to show you like the dynamics are so crucial. And like, I say mm -hmm. this all the time and I said it, but it didn't make the edit, but I was always like, you know, confidence leads to overconfidence overconfidence leads to arrogance arrogance leads to ignorance and ignorance leads to getting voted out because not a single idol was played yeah. even before the merge the only idol played was the fake one that yeah. just played you know yeah that was amazing to me which yeah. i don't know if like what that's I mean, yeah i mean i think well actually what you said is you know the right way to look at it but it's just insane that that many idols in a row just yeah. walking out in somebody's pocket like totally amazing because i mean like most of the time i mean do you always have every tribal do you always have paranoia that like gosh it's gonna be me like i just you know, know i felt the only time i was in danger was the tim vote and the gem vote okay and after q and maria sunk my game 
I knew nobody took me seriously, which was great because then that allows you to fly under the radar. But then I started making friendships with a lot of these people. Mm -hmm. I knew that if I had told Q I was going to be mean to him and we had the smoke screen, if he would honor it, he would honor it if he made it to the jury, which he did. They didn't show it, but he did. And I knew like in that Hunter vote, I told Hunter, he was like, have you heard my name tonight? And I turned to him and said, well, you are a threat. And then all of a sudden he tried to get a vote on me. Yeah. I was like, okay, so if I say that to him, he's going to know I was aware, which he did give me credit for. Yeah. You know, um, there was just a lot of little instances like that where I let it known what was going to happen, but people didn't take me seriously. So it got played, and I was hoping when I got to final travel, I'd be able to talk about that. And I really wasn't. The one time was when Q stood up for me, and Liz jumped in too, and it was like, it is what it is, you know, like, and regardless of what the edit shows, I think with the hands, with the cards I was dealt, I mm-hmm. played the best I could yes. because these people very clearly only cared about their alliance. And then that alliance all ended up on the jury, you know? Right, right. So at some point, I just knew we got to outlast them because no matter if it's Q or Maria, if one of them makes it to the end, they've got the numbers, you know? Yeah. Sega didn't have the numbers. All three of us went at the... From the mer from the pre merge yeah. into the mer the uh, murgatory, you know. Yeah. So, do you think if Maria went was in the final three, she would have won? A hundred percent. I said yeah. it every day. I said, yeah. you know, regardless of my relation with Maria, she's an older woman who's coming and defying the odds. She's mm-hmm. gelling with you know the secret six, the hard players. She's winning multiple immunities. How could you not respect that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and, I was just yeah. shocked she didn't feel like talking to us much, you know, unless we were her numbers. But, yeah. uh, you know, it is what it is. And yeah. that was my incentive is like, you called me a liar every day. I can't let you win, you know? And it's like, yes, yeah. I might be a goat. And I might not get votes, but like Survivor is a personal store and you could call it petty or whatever. But I was like, I was just like, you're driving the minivan. I will slash that tire dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Do you think, okay. So do you think if Q was in the final three, he would have won? I think he had a chance. Genuinely. I, that's the one I'm the most curious about. I like in an alternate predict, universe. It's hard yeah. to predict. Cause yeah. I don't know how they all felt at Ponderosa. Right. I was only there for a day, but my perception was that they didn't know what was really happening. So you know, what the audience doesn't realize is the jury is only going off what they're seeing at tribal and whoever's mm-hmm. coming out of the game. Yeah. So if everybody getting, coming out of the yeah. game is falling prey to a smoke screen. Right. Right. Exactly. And they're only seeing the smoke screen at tribal. Mm-hmm. Where is their head at? Cause it could have very well looked like Q was, you know, staying in the game. The guy was catching votes every tribal, but yeah. never going home. And yeah. there's a right way to frame that story. Losing tribe before the merge controls the game for a couple of votes, blows it up and is still in it. That's mm-hmm. like a Rocky underdog story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's like Rocky five, bro. You know what I mean? Tommy gun. Yeah, yeah. That's if, uh, yeah, I think that's a dynamic that a lot of people maybe don't think about is that when you are part of sending someone to Ponderosa, they are now going to be talking to the people at Ponderosa and yeah. you, I mean, are you aware of like, man, I got to make sure that I'm on, that I have put myself in a position to where they're going to speak highly of me at Ponderosa. Yeah, like, I are mean, you thinking of those kinds I of think, things? I think I clocked it pretty early on. I wasn't going to win, you know, like, yeah. I just wanted to tell my story because I thought it was a good one, you know, For sure. sunk game, never lost my cool was in on the moves uh turned the accidental vote into a great wedge had Mm -hmm. the smoke screen had the fashion show it was like unique and creative um i didn't think it was the best game of the season i think there was a lot of great games being played but i was like that is a case but yeah you have to tell that and you know it's like another thing i don't know if it's shown but these people constantly said they were going to vote for whoever played the hardest and in the end, the vote came down to what we would have done with the million. I know? don't, I hate that. And yeah, I, you I, know, and, and, and Kenzie's story uh, is great. She yeah. was a social player. She was also on the Yanu tribe. There is an underdog trajectory there. But it's like, as unpredictable as our season was, so was the questions at tribal. 
Yes, I, I, without a doubt, because I was watching that final tribal, and again, just seeing what's shown, and was kind of bummed by some of the questions. Not all yeah. of them. I mean, there was, I think, a lot of really great questions that were setting people up to, you know, say why they deserve it. But the "what are you doing with the money" thing bothers me. I don't a think bit. personally. I don't think that should ever be on Survivor, because if that's the case, don't spend twenty six days playing a game. You yeah, know? let's let's everybody just show what's in our bank account and whoever's got yeah. the least amount gets and the money. To be fair, I, mean, that... I think I had the best story there. They didn't even show it, but it's like, dude, you know, I've had the highs in the music career. Mm -hmm. I've spent my money. I'm always grinding. I'm always on tour. I teach kids. I give back to the community. Yeah. I'm like back at my parents during the pandemic, you know, yeah. like I'm living this weird Dewey Finn saga. <laughs> But I'm always trying to do well with my money and I want sure. to retire my parents and contribute to music education and further my own career. Yeah. And it's like, I've been working just as hard since I was 15. And it's like, yeah. I didn't really get to say that, you know? And, right. it's like, and it's like, you know, maybe I should have said I'm going to be selfish, but I was like, I'm not, that's not who I am. Like, I'm yeah. like, even in my band now, my band members are a couple of my students, my best mm -hmm. friends from childhood. Like I'm always trying to include the crew. And it's like, I also thought part of my gameplay was like, I played the most loyal games of the season. I'm sitting yeah. at final three with my two besties, which could be a bad move, but I just knew how the jury was going to be. For sure. You know, like I didn't know what the outcome was going to be, but I knew how they were going to be towards me. So okay. it was like, why not give my buddies a shot? You know what I'm saying? Especially because the yeah. two of them took care of me when I was going through it, yeah. you know, but yeah. that it didn't even look that way. It didn't look like I played a loyal game, but it's like, what are the odds that like, you know, Charlie and I are sitting there together and it's weird because you're watching the finale and like Ben and Charlie played a very close and similar game. It's like, well, nobody saw that. You know what I mean? No, <laughs> but we did. You know? <laughs> yeah, that is. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. I, you know, like everybody deserves the money, you know. Everybody deserves money, and people are, people are good people. Like but, there's nobody who is enough. Case right, like, and there's nothing wrong. The jury is always right, but like yeah, exactly. That's what it comes why down answer to. All the questions about gameplay. That's, yeah, because then ultimately matters. that doesn't matter. You know? Yeah, I mean, which you know? granted, Kenzie, amazing gameplay too. So it's yeah, not, dude, it's, it's not like a, a horrible beast, decision dude. or something. It's not. Yeah. I'm not mad at the outcome, and For that's sure. why I always worry when I do these podcasts. I don't want. I'm not bitter over who won. I'm not bitter over anything other than how I was treated at Final Tribal. Yeah, you, know you don't you don't come across bitter like that at all. <laughs> Appreciate you. No, it's I mean, smart yeah, for I sure. can't objectively view it, you know, like yeah, which is funny because yeah. when I make art or when I make my music, I try to always be like, who's gonna rock with this and give myself <laughs> objective criticism? But I'm yeah. so like I know too much of behind the scenes to yeah. have that unbiased opinion towards myself watching it you know yeah yeah i mean that's yeah that's got to be such a weird way of looking yeah. at yourself seeing yourself on a show like survivor like, yeah and like it's just it's so like weird world survivor dude yeah. you know like, <laughs> dude i like there's just so many moments in that season where like you could see how like an audience would gravitate towards you like w without a doubt like just little nuggets where it's like god damn man ben seems like cool as hell dude. Like, the comment i see the most i don't know if he's a good player but i definitely share a beer with him i'm like that's cool <laughs> like, you, know? Amen. <laughs> you know that's that's, but it's like, I mean, that's a pretty good compliment it. people are coming to my concerts there's definitely a correlation happening like for sure we played fort lauderdale the other night and people flew from tampa drove from fort myers orlando jacksonville Two people wore out rock and out shred homemade t-shirts. That's awesome. You know, I've gotten gifts in the mail from fans. I'm like, something really resonates. A, I think with me just being myself in spite of all the chaos. Yeah. And also that I think people see that story of like, I didn't quit, you know? Yes. And do I wish the portrayal of that was a little different? Like, you know, I laughed a lot. I always found a positive in it. When you see those panic mm -hmm. attacks, it doesn't cut to any of that, but like every time that would happen, I'd wake up and say crazy, but that's how it goes. Yeah. You know, quote Ozzy. <laughs> yeah, and like, yeah. I was always trying to make people feel comfortable. You know, when Maria didn't get the letters from home, I fed her mm -hmm. papaya and tried to talk her and be like, yeah. four days left till you talk to your kids. You know, like, 
you know, yes. I was always trying to be a champion of the other people, you know, yeah. because and if you watch that secret scene with Charlie after Maria sinks my game, you know, I, I feel like in my personal life, I ran a record label. I'm always promoting my friends' bands. And I'm like, I always feel like people mm. forget to do that for me. But yeah, I don't yeah. do that for the transaction. I just, it's one of the reasons I love Survivor. I think mm. people are so different and unique in their own ways. I'm even fascinated by a cubicle worker, you know, <laughs> that probably is as milk toast as as a piece of milk toast you yeah. know and it's like yeah. what makes people people what makes them tick what makes them care and that's why i love survivor and that's why i love life and that's why i think it's such a great social experiment mm -hmm. and I always try to find something i like in anybody like q pissed me off so much out there <laughs> and he was still making me crack up oh, every yeah. day yeah. but there was something about his chaos that was so endearing and earnest Yes. And even his bulldog attitude, I was like, you know, it was like with Venus, one of the things I loved about Venus, like, yes, she was intense, but yeah. she could always clock the game. And I think she always wanted to play. And like, even though people didn't really give her a chance, she didn't let get the, get the best of her. She went down swinging, you know, yes. like, there's, it, there's positives for everyone, you know, as yeah. much as there are negatives. And uh, I don't know, that's, that's uh my philosophy to life and that's how i approach yeah. the game too well well i think you know another thing that makes people gravitate towards you whenever they're seeing it is that you know so like i have massive panic attacks like crazy yeah. panic attacks all the time and when people think of like somebody who has panic attacks they assume it's a person who walks through life like terrified all the time which is yeah. not necessarily the case like you show the opposite ends, which is reality that you can have these moments where you're like fucking terrified for no reason. And then also still be super funny and like happy go lucky, which I kind of am the same way. Like I like, I like making comedy. I like, you know, doing this yeah. kind of shit, but I also sometimes think that, you know, my heart is stopping <laughs> and it isn't like, there's totally, I mean, like, it's just one of those weird things where you like, you, like you were sh like, you're, showing people like an accurate representation of what that is like yeah well, because and, it's and, real, it's, but. and I, I love hearing that it's funny because it's like my big beef with the edit is like i felt like they didn't show it to the extent that it, it was in yeah. terms of i was still on the right side of the votes i was still happy go lucky but i made an effort to not let it define me and i think yeah. it comes across to an extent but like i always just want people to know that when they are watching it that like you are not defined by whatever condition you have, you know, whatever it is, whether it's panic attacks or something else. You're def it's like that quote in Rocky Balboa, you know, it's like it's about what you do after. I mean, I'm paraphrasing. This, yeah, like, yeah. You know, when you get up after how hard you get hit, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And like, and that's what I want people to take away. And I've gotten a lot of kind messages and people come up yeah. to me at shows and it's like, I'm at least grateful that people have that because when i was a kid and i was bullied and i was being made fun of like it's why i gravitated towards you know tommy from power rangers or michelangelo <laughs> or adam sandler and billy madison it's like yeah there are weirdos like me out there who continue to go despite their weird quirks exactly you know? yeah and they end up being some of the most like beloved people because they're weird yeah. and people ultimately I mean, want to be like openly episodes, weird i've got one line in you know like i just disappear <laughs> And then, like, I'm getting people are buying my merch and coming to yeah, my concerts yeah. and sending me messages. And I'm like, I'm touched, dude, because it was hard for me to feel like I was being erased from the story, you know, and yeah. then to see that it has had an impact. And, like, you know, I know they've got a story they got to tell. It's not about that. It's more sure. just like, you know, when you're in the show, there's so much you want to say and you can't say it while it's happening. And I'm glad it had an effect. And I'm like, you know, I'm not ungrateful for Survivor because of that. I mean, like, I'm hyped, you know, like I was on one of my favorite shows and yeah. I made it to the end. And regardless of how people see it, I know I did it. And I hope anybody who thinks about applying or whatever knows mm -hmm. you can do it, too. You know, it's yeah. like it's like making it to the end, no matter who you are, is insane, you know, yes. without do without a doubt, man. Yeah, yeah that's I, I mean, one of my favorite things, just as somebody who obviously loves rock music like any kind of metal and everything like that is like you you and which they i mean i don't know how much it happened on the show like you know cameras you know not being yeah. shown on tv 
but like you and old Jeff Probst going back and forth with Van Halen lyrics. You have no thing. idea. That was like edited down to a tenth of what it was. <laughs> That's what there I wondered. Tribal, I think it was like the second tribal after the merge. I think it was, I think it was the Tevin boat. Okay. The one with you quit, but Jeff had asked me, you know, my game was sunk and whatever. And Jeff, and like I talk like this anyways, but Jeff goes, Ben, yeah. what's it like back at camp? And I said, you know, Jeff, they say we got to hold on to what we got. Doesn't make a difference if we make it or not. We got each other. They just go, stop, stop. Everybody, does Ben really talk like this or was he rehearsing this? And everybody went, no, Jeff, he really does talk like that. He talks like, in lyrics. He leaned in, you know, like <laughs> he really leaned in. Like there were so many times it didn't even make the edit. Like when we were on that pizza reward challenge. You know, it was like it was rainy all day, and then he was like, "Here comes the sun." Yeah. Ben, you hear what I did there? Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> well, there was one that, like, I remember him saying, "Like everybody wants some," and I was dude, wondering, yeah. "Is he? Is, are people noticing this?" Dude, like, well, I had to like, think about it. I was like, "Is he doing that?" I over? heard it while we were like jumping off. I heard, yeah. "Wow, Q face planted. Somebody get me a doctor." doctor that's like, what it was. That's what it was. And then yeah. he goes. He goes, he goes, we got to dive her down, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think he had like four or five quotes that made it into the edit. Amazing. You know? But the best one was that final four challenge when I finally won. And I yeah. said, everybody wants some. And now I got some too. And then Jeff That's goes into the yeah. unchained thing. Come on, Ben, give me a break. Like <laughs> right on cue, you know? That's so awesome. I think, I mean, God, he is the greatest host of all time without like the, a doubt there's and no one that even comes close like that, that dude becomes more like awesome every season yeah and i don't think people give him enough credit because it's like dude like you're watching like yes he's a great host but i want to talk about him specifically at tribal mm -hmm. he's getting fed all this information so he kind of knows what's going on yeah but he has a way of asking all these questions that really make you realize he is really good at getting people to crack. I think he says he in one episode he watches all these police interrogation videos. Yeah, he said that. Yeah, and, and I was like, like oh, Jesus. The master yeah. class in exposing the cracks, like we know the Tim boat. I knew it was going to be me or Tim. I wasn't like dumb. They weren't going to go for Hunter. Kenzie was cool with Hunter. Q was cool with Hunter, and Tim was turning on the Secret Six. But I knew that everybody thought I was like a social threat. I just didn't realize Tim had sunk his game, you know, by, I didn't know the whole parameters of the secret six. He had told me about it before we went to the merge because of his journey. But anyways, we're at that tribal and he goes, I never thought the Yanu three would be in a power position. Hunter, what's your case tonight? He's like, I don't vibe with the Namis. The Sega boys come into the merge and they're super tight. And Sega's strong. And here we are with two Sega's. I'm trying to be part of the Yanu 4. And then he cuts to Tim. And I'm like, Tim, yo, Hunter is like, he's crushing it. There's no way he's going up. And Tim starts talking about his social game. And then Tim starts revealing that he knows everything about everything. And you see it at the challenge. Tim's like, shout out to Maria's kids. And shout out to Ben's mom. And shout out to Kenzie's fiance. And blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. And so I'm sitting there and be like, man, Tim is friends with everybody and they're all finding out. Yeah. So then Tim's explaining his game to Jeff and he has Hunter and Tim going back and forth for what feels like an eternity. And I'm just sitting there like, hope I don't get called. And then Jeff yeah. goes, so we've heard from Hunter. We've heard from Tim. Ben, what's your pitch? <laughs> and in that moment, I felt like that was a signal that Tim was going home. Because okay. I start talking about my social game, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, he's painting the picture that Tim and I are kind of like, you know, the real options that need to go. And Tim is not thinking, yo, it's me until the end. And he goes, Tim, tell us about your journey. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. God. He, I mean, he, the way he can navigate that is just, he's so good. My God, the inter yeah. police interrogation thing, boy, that it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> when you see oh, like, yeah, dude, like, this guy, like, man, he's amazing. And it's like, I, I'm just, you know, like, I remember sitting there and be like, 
I'm really sad about Tim. <laughs> but I'm also like, damn, Jeff is so good. Like, how could you be mad at that? You know? And like, I know. You know, he puts on such a good face. He genuinely mm. cares about Survivor. I know yes. he's always coming up with cool ways to make the game exciting for the players and for the audience that's watching it. But, like, you don't do those moves at Tribal mm. and all that stuff without caring. Like, it looks like people are just talking, but I feel like those questions are very carefully articulated. I mean – the guy came to pop came to tribal with a bowl of popcorn. Yeah. After we lost out on a reward. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. He knows what he's doing, dude. For sure. Like, oh, yeah. Even our yeah. season, like, dude, that's like the longest a, a cast has ever gone without rice. You know what I'm saying? Like, was it really? Yeah. The, dude, we didn't oh, have rice yeah. from day one to like day 19 or something. Oh, you know? My like, God. Yeah. That's I mean, rough. look at how garish I look. Dude. But, you know, it's like, it's like, that's why that Applebee's reward was so crucial. And oh, yeah. Spicy Jeff had just come back. So it was the comments. I, I have this journal. I talk about it on every interview I do, but I wrote the whole game out. I drew the challenges. I remember every convo. Look, I drew the table of the merge feast and who My, like sat where. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> let me try and find some challenges like so you see how well i drew them out um one second oh yeah here's the here is the final four challenge i drew it out oh my All god memory that's a um, it's like memento yeah totally you just need like, to get it all tattooed on final you. five in steps <laughs> You know, so it's like everything down from the puzzle to like the holes in the plank. And oh my god! You're like I Guy Pierce. The second, I got out of the game. Um, that's 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 amazing. God. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, so I remember a lot of the funny one-liners that Jeff had. That didn't yeah. Cut. Like I yeah. remember there was a challenge, and we you, right before the challenge, Jeff gives you the rundown on how it's going to go, and I remember. Jeff, you're going too soft on us, dog. Like, this is a vicious season. Like, why aren't you going hard? Like, we want spicy Jeff back. And he goes, mm. you know, the world's a sensitive place. You know, the pandemic, everybody is trying to figure out their way. So, Jeff, we signed up for Survivor. I'm taking credit for bringing spicy Jeff back because I brought that up. Oh, and yeah. the challenge starts. I forget what it was. But I remember it was like Liz and Kenzie were moving slow. Mm. And I was too, but I remember hearing – Liz, moving as slow as humanly possible. I was like, Jeff is back. <laughs> That's the best. He is so sneakily funny. Dude, all right, I'll it's tell you amazing. The funniest one that didn't make the edit. Okay. I almost won the Applebee's reward. And I wish they would have showed it, not because I need the credit for it, but because what Jeff said was so funny. I got the ball at the top of that pole, right? Mm -hmm. We had to throw those bean bags up and it yeah. lands. And Jeff goes, Ben. And then the ball immediately falls. He goes, Ben, with a moral victory. <laughs> like, you know, like, and then Q immediately won. And it was like uh, such a tense moment, you oh, know? God. But I couldn't help but crack up. Yeah. Like it was like being it was like being roasted, you know? Yes. Like, yeah so, oh he's so he's so damn good yeah dude. it was great dude and then oh, he brought man. the licorice to tribal yeah the, yeah yeah so you know he knows what he's doing he's great at oh, it yeah. you know dude all right i got a few i don't want to you know hold you too long i got a dude, few all good. i'm having a great time all right good good i got some random questions not even survivor related although could talk about survivor for the next six hours but uh cool. now these are going to be more like uh music movies you know got to do a little pop culture in here cool all right I think I already know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it anyways, because uh, who would I be to just assume this? Uh, Van Halen or Van Hagar? Dude, I mean, the fact that you even have to ask that, dude. I know. I'm and Dave to the you grave, never know. bro. So no Gary Sharon either? <laughs> you know, I'll mess with a Hagar song or two. You know, Dreams <sighs> was on the Power Rangers movie soundtrack. It's one of the greatest songs ever made. And I'll say this. I, I mean, I'm with you, Van Halen, for sure. I do think Sammy Hagar is one of the greatest singers of all time. Like voices, I really like, like the voices. solo Sammy Hagar, like VOA. Uh, it's okay, just yeah, I yeah, also yeah. think in, in Van Halen, yeah. like when it becomes Van Hagar, Eddie doesn't go. 
the riffs aren't as creative. Yeah. So it just sounds like another 80s band to me, you know? Yeah, that's true. It does turn into almost like um like U2 even a little bit. Yeah. Like it, it has like kind of a more like that sort of feel to totally. it. Totally. But there are some killer moments like you know the riffs on pound cake pound cake is yeah that's you know, that's the, the composition one. of right now is really good but mm-hmm. there's something like david lee roth makes singing about being a party animal feel poetic and beautiful and yes you feel like you're in on the party with them and they make you want to celebrate life and that's what i love about david lee roth era van halen yeah. have you ever I heard- up, nothing gets me down you know <laughs> you got a job on Survivor, I seen the toughest around. So <laughs> my God, man, dude, that's. A- Have you ever heard the story about them doing that? Uh, the little sweepstakes where they almost killed that guy. Dude, amazing. <laughs> There's like a short film on it now. Yeah, there is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I saw that like a while back. I was like, this is. I mean, I'd do it. I'd risk yeah. it all to hang out with a party with Van Halen. Hundred percent. Man, anyone who calls himself. Di- I mean, he called himself Diamond Dave Roth, which is to give yourself a nickname is already crazy. For most people, but not for him. Station, bro. You know. Dude. All right. So, next one. Uh, Master of Puppets or Ride the Lightning? That's hard because I do love Master of Puppets as a whole more, but my favorite songs are on Ride the Lightning. For whom the bell tolls. Yeah. Creeping Death. I know people yeah. are going to hate me for this one. I love Escape. Uh, Dude. I don't know why people hate that song. Oh, I know why because it doesn't I think sound like Metallica a Metallica hates song. on it. They feel like they yes. got to be synonymous with the band. Well, like if Escape <sighs> was made by Judas Priest, people would be like, "This is awesome." <laughs> yeah, that song is awesome. I love that song. I didn't I used know to listen to it in the school bus on the way to high school, <laughs> yeah. and it would be like the sun hadn't come out yet. <laughs> so I was like thinking about going to prison, and like when the alarm <laughs> starts going, I was like, "We got to skip school today, dude." <laughs> dude, Escape is a great song. I don't yeah. care what people say, but uh, I go master of puppets overall yeah. but yeah, as a whole it's is. orion is one of the coolest <sighs> compositions i yes. love damage inc i loved it Le- leper messiah is one of my favorite metallica riffs of all time yeah but it's like again it's like you go back and forth but yeah you know ride the lightning the whole way through does not feel as just like a solid brick as master of puppets yeah because it's still way more thrash than like yeah. the full metal sound yeah that, like metallica later which my favorite song from metallica is blackened but i'm not a huge fan of that album as a whole same i love uh, blackened and i love freight ends of sanity that's a great yeah 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 yeah, yeah. which has yeah. my favorite lars phil we were talking about it backstage the other day with coach i was like <laughs> all right sickest drum fill is that fill before the shred section and Freight ends the same goes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, that is Lars's sickest <sighs> moment. What's your favorite guitar riff of all time? Not Metallica or whatever. Do you have one that just like every time you hear it, it just I mean it fires you up? Dude, I mean Unchained. Uh <sighs> I'll give Mine... you a list of a few. Unchained. Okay. Uh I think Seek and Destroy. Um mm. I love Hangar 18. I love that's a great Chosen one. Ones by Megadeth is like a top three. I'm a huge mm-hmm. Dave Mustaine fan too. Me too. Oh yeah. I will say this. Kiss is my all-time favorite band. Okay. Of all the Kiss riffs, I do have a favorite solo of all time, and it's Ace's solo on Shock Me. Is like oh wow. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. one of the sickest guitar solos of all time. He's and incredible. Like oh, uh, Fraley's it. Comet is good, which most people I've met all really of them. Care. Kiss oh. and Fraley's Comet. Yeah, they're um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, favorite guitar riffs. It's hard, but those are definitely up there. Yeah, uh, I'm the one is my favorite. Van Halen. Love that that's too. that's my favorite riff of all. Every time I hear it, it's, it's just so it's the mastering play, of God. I yeah. I finally got it, and it took yeah. me forever. But dude, we got a jam. Oh, without a doubt, dude. Yeah, the uh, it's the mixing and mastering of it, and the solo too. When it actually does that break, and it's that. Oh, dude, that. insane! Ooh, oh, okay. Man. A favorite Kiss riff did come to mind. I stole your love. The opening track on Love Gun, shit oh, rips. That yeah. and like call. I mean, dude, I could go on for. Mine's God of Thunder for Kiss. God of yeah, Thunder is my rips. favorite riff. I I love any kind of little like like kind of riff like that or i mean my actually probably my favorite riff of all time besides or besides i'm the one is a uh, round and round by rat 
Dude, love, love that, that one too, yeah. bro. I yeah. love it. And like, dude, Motley Crue's Wild Side, like. Oh yeah, Motley Crue has a lot. Mick Mars is a very underrated guitarist. Cause I mean, he's people, in my top know. three. It's like Ace, you know, Ace, Mick, and then probably James. You know, like top yeah. five would probably have Johnny Ramone and like Dave Mustaine. But like the tattoo really, that was Ramone? covered on Survivor is a Motley yeah. Crue tattoo. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn, yeah. Johnny or Ramon, really? He'd be that high up for you? Dude, that down picking. <sighs> and I'm a, Ramones were one of my first favorite bands. And I play that way. I don't alternate pick. I do mostly down picking. Yeah. And I know that's one of James Hetfield's biggest inspirations, <sighs> too. But I got it's, into the yeah. Ramones before Metallica. So when I heard him say that, I was like, yes, we're on the same. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The same <laughs> well, that's how I feel about uh, Misfits. Like, oh, that's, yeah. like I'm a massive fan of Danzig and the Misfits totally. and, but it, I would see pictures of like Cliff Burton wearing like Misfit shirts. And that's how like, I got into the Misfits. Yeah. Dude, oh man. They're amazing too. Yeah. I saw Danzig live once. I skipped school. My parents were like, <laughs> you can't go. It's a holiday. It was like a Jewish holiday. Yeah. Yeah. So I made a CD about how my parents wouldn't let me see Danzig on GarageBand. And I sold <laughs> enough copies to get tickets and I left through the window. Yeah. And that day Danzig was playing in South beach. And so during my favorite song, Tired of Being Alive, he leaped over mm -hmm. the stage and we locked horns. And then that picture came out in like the Miami New Times or something. And yep. the next day, my parents were like, so uh, Danzig, huh? <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. Nah, he's, yeah, he's, a, I, fuck, I love Danzig. I've yet to see the reunited Misfits. But I, I haven't know. either. I've seen yeah. the Misfits, but it was like just, you know, Jerry only. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, what I mean. It's, it's like you're it paying is. your homage, you know? Yeah. And I mean, it was the at the time the only option because they hadn't reunited. Now I could yeah. see them like reunited. Wish they were just in Austin like not that long ago, which I should have. Hopefully we see them together. That'd be sick. Dude, I would. You know, I'm getting hit up like, you know, I'm playing with my other band, Gorilla Toss, and we're touring uh -huh. Primus this summer. With who? Primus. Oh, it's man. like we're opening for Coheed and Cambria and Primus. And then after that, I'll be touring my own stuff and we're getting asked to do festivals. So if we come through Texas, you're on the list, dude. Oh, dude, without yeah. a doubt, man. Primus yeah. is amazing. Primus is oh, such dude. a good band. Les Claypool loves Survivor, which weirdly really? enough, <laughs> you know, when he asked Gorilla Toss to do the tour, he did not know I was playing with the band. But he like shot a text, I think, being like, is Ben Katz been playing? Because I love Survivor. I'm like, That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> well, I don't know why, but I don't picture Les Claypool owning a television. I, I don't know, know why right? I think that, but it seems but that Coach way. is coming to sit in with us at that <sighs> gig, at, at one that's of the gigs. So I that's hope that's going to be awesome. Flips out, but. Oh, yeah. Dude, yeah, Les, man. That, I mean, that is that guy is incredible. Yeah, I, yeah, I could listen to Promise, like Promise and Faith No More are like super high Dude, up on just I was weird. Faith kind no More of the last couple of days because I watched Bill and Ted Bogus Journey. Yeah, and yeah. I yeah. forgot Jim Martin was in it. I was rocking out to Angels Dust and the Real Thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they ripped. Yeah. Dude. Oh man, we been right, going uh, for hours, dude. You got any I more know. lightning round questions? I do, I do. I yeah, I know. I'm trying not to. Get I got some. time, dude. So I'm not okay. gonna rush. Okay, okay. Just want to make sure. All right, so uh. This is the the classic, but uh, priest or maiden, dude? It's hard. Yeah, because the maiden I like is the Paul Diano maiden. Really? Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm a fan of those more aggressive singers. I love Power Slave. I love, you know, Number of the Beast. Like mm -hmm. some of my favorite riffs, Flash of the Blade. You know, yeah. Ace is High. But there's something about the aggression on those first two records, the self titled mm -hmm. and Killers. Yeah, Phantom of the opera, all that stuff. I just it hits me, dude. It really does. And maybe it's because in my own music, I don't have an operatic voice and I have more of a yeah. thrash voice. Right, right. But I love those first two maiden records, but I'm gonna give it up for priest straight up. Like, yeah, you know, uh sin after sin, hell bent mm -hmm. for leather. Like, you gotta understand. Yeah, I mean, painkiller, painkiller is one of my know, favorite. When you're a metalhead, you're encompassed by all of it, you know, mm -hmm. like. So I've listened to these bands thousands of times and I know about who's on which track and yeah. what studio and why they did this and what happened there. Like, you know, so it's hard to objectively pick one over the other, but I find myself going back and forth between early Maiden and Priest more than later Maiden. So, yeah, I need to really like do more of a deep dive into early. I mean, I've listened to it for sure, like, but I need to really like. It's just like punk rock with guitar solo. Right. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah, he's... especially the titled, the self-titled yes. song Iron Maiden. Mm-hmm. Like that riff when the harmonies come in, and then Steve Harris is doing the the <sighs> ripping. Like God, he's he is incredible yeah. too. Like those yeah. like triplets that he. I mean, he is. Yeah, he's amazing. Uh, yeah. Do you consider Led Zeppelin a metal band? No. Okay, because that was yeah. one that I've always heard like people compare like do you know zeppelin or sabbath like they're a hard I, rock band which, but i can see they've influenced metal you yes because i don't consider sabbath to necessarily be a full metal band either no they're also a hard rock band i yeah. think when i think when dio is in the band and when they do okay when they have like the singer in the 80s was it tony martin then they fully embrace the singer metal in the stuff. 80s yeah like they do, like, ian wasn't Ian, uh, Ian Gillen just does the Ian born Gillen. again record. You see, I'm a nerd, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but like, that's when they're like a metal band. But For when sure. they're with Ozzy, they're like a true hard rock band. Yeah, and the blues. Like, there's a huge blues yeah. influence to like those, which to me is why like Judas Priest is the first metal band. Yeah, because there's no I, blues Judas influence. Is the first band to come along and be like, this is the sound. No blues. Yes. Straight like, up grinding. Right. And I would also give it up to Rainbow, Richie Blackmore's Rainbow. Dude, I am such a fan of Richie. Richie Blackmore to me is like Mount Rushmore guitarist for Same sure. Same here, brother. Ugh, Same here. He I was working amazing. on the Highway Star solo before we we're on the call. That one, dude, like, that one's so it's tough. Like, it's like, wait, sorry. But you know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah. It's like, What's well, that second? It. I don't even it's the second you. solo with the harmonies that is, or not harmonies, the double track is. So... Oh, man. You get the vibe, dude. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> he's so. Oh, I, I am a huge Richie Blackmore fan. Do yeah, you... I love Richie Blackmore. Um, but yeah, I think Priest is definitely like the first. Yeah. Metal band for sure. Uh, Deep Purple versus Thin Lizzy. For like yeah, Deep Purple, minutes. you already know the answer. I love Thin Lizzy, but it's like I remember I got into Deep Purple because of that smoke in the water scene in School of Rock. I was like 11 <laughs> years old. It was the day I decided to play guitar. I was playing piano and I grabbed a guitar out of my dad's closet and I just like taught myself how to play Smoke on the Water by Ear. And the next day I went and got Machine Head. <sighs> and that record just blew my mind, dude. Pictures of home yes. with that bass solo and Maybe I'm a Leo and like space truck in like, yeah, dude. Yeah. And I like love other deep purple stuff, but like that album, everything pales in comparison. Like which, oh yeah. Which, which like secondary singer do you like more? Do you like deep purple with David Coverdale or Ozzy with Dio or Van Halen with Sammy Hagar? I don't like Van Halen with Sammy Hagar. And, I love okay, okay. Sammy, but only a few songs. It's gotcha. just, but uh, yeah, I I'm a huge Dio fan, so I'm, yeah. I would always go Ozzy with yeah. Dio, and I love Black Sabbath with Dio. I love Rainbow. I love mm-hmm. Dio. I love yeah. Heaven and Hell. I think like you know it's funny in the pregame before the island they take your phones away, so I made like a mixtape with all my favorite songs mm-hmm. to get me hyped. And there were so many Dio tracks <laughs> on that mixtape. I had Neon Nights, I had Heaven and Hell, I had Wishing yeah. Well. I had Temple of the King. I mm. had, yeah, I had End of the Line. It was, I mean, yeah. Last in Line. Last in Line's the best. Yeah, dude. I had like a ton of Dio on there. I was like, oh. I didn't even realize I like Dio this much, you know? Oh, okay. Bon Scott ACDC or Brian Johnson ACDC? Bon Scott all day. And Hell it's funny, yeah. one of the reasons I got into rock music was uh, my parents were out of town and I was riding mm. the bike home. It was like fifth or sixth grade. And all these cops had nothing better to do. Some kids were breaking into houses in the neighborhood Mm -hmm. and they pulled me over. I wasn't one of those kids and like 10 cops were on me. And it was like, just goes to show you, like you live in like a, any neighborhood cops have nothing to do. They're going to take it out on a little kid. Right. Yeah. They're like, we know you did it. We're going to take you to the Jack son. (laughs) It was like, I was crying. I was like, I don't know what I did. Yeah. And my neighbor had to come pick me up. Oh, Man. And my neighbor took me to his like record room. It was like, grab that first thing you see. And it was the ACDC 74, 75 jailbreak EP. Oh, and man. it was like one of those That's like, a great one. and it's got baby, please don't go mm-hmm. and soul stripper. But that first time I heard <laughs> and how Bon Scott was like giving a sermon and telling yeah. a story. And it was like, <laughs> then the vocals come as jail, like 
Bon Scott was just such a storyteller and made it feel yes. so personal, and he had such a commanding presence. And the Brian Johnson stuff is lit too. You can't deny. Yeah. For those about to rock, which was the first song I listened to after survival was over. For those uh, about to rock, we salute you. Yeah. But uh yeah, it was just like that attitude you can't duplicate, yeah. you know. No, Bon Scott is like Australian Jim Morrison. Like they yeah, just had that that like it's just like a hedonistic living on the edge, dude. Well, boy, did they. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Okay. Um best movie soundtrack. Because when you said Bill and Ted, that actually kind of got me thinking and made me second guess my usual answer. Because Bill and I Ted know, might I'm be like one a of huge the best. movie nerd, so it's like it changes all the time. Like sometimes it's like it'll be like a movie score or something, you know? Like, okay. but uh, damn, I was just having this conversation with somebody the other day. What my favorite movie soundtrack is? Because I go Days and Confused. Days and Confused is an immaculate mind. soundtrack. Yeah. I think Almost Famous is like. Oh. You know, the gold standard. Well, I really because Forrest Gump also, I hate that movie so much, but <laughs> that soundtrack is so good. Yeah, like, it's hard to answer, but also it's like I think the soundtrack I might listen to the most would be the Rocky 2 soundtrack, you know, really? because of the original compositions, you yeah, know, and Bill Conti. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. uh, yeah, I, I Bill and Ted's a good one too because of Extreme Play With Me. That that is a solo I have been trying. You know what I mean? Like it is so Nuno Betancourt is. It's gonna sound like ass because I'm not plugged well, in. I know. But... Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. No, that soundtrack's amazing. But the Bogus Journey soundtrack's my favorite one. Yeah, I gotta re-listen to that one. I've been well, seeing starting in a long war. time. War. It's yeah. got the Kiss comeback jam. God gave rock and roll to you too. Like that's a good one. Yeah. The movie ends and the song that saves the world is a kiss song. Like, <laughs> albeit it's an interpretation and mainly a cover, but like, let's go. Dude, dude. You know? Okay. Last question. Cause I want to take up again. We're over there. Got um, a few more. I'll do them. Dude. Oh, okay. So I do. What's a band that you wish was at the same level of fame as like Metallica? Like a band that you're like, why don't more people like this band? And they can still be, you know, relatively well known. Yeah, like, I mean, dude, it's funny because it's like, you know, I think like the first two Oasis records are next level. I know they don't click with like American audiences as well, but it's like, yeah, I'm not a fan. Yeah, I mean, that I band had, yeah, that sure. band had the world by the balls. But I think if there's any answer, it's like people don't realize is the Ramones might be popular today, but like. They were only playing like a thousand seat rooms yeah. in, when they were around. And it's like, it's like now they're used in commercials and movies. Right. I think they're one of those bands that if they were alive a little longer, they would have had one of those arena level reunion tours, you know, oh, no uh, doubt. Cause they did yeah. the, they did the U S festival in 82, which yep. is, you know, pretty, I mean, it was a lot of people, a couple hundred thousand, but they were like getting booed off the stage. Cause people were like, what is this shit? We're here to see Van Halen and Ozzy. And, totally. You know, and here's the other thing. It's like the Ramones were playing arenas and stadiums in every other country, but America on their last right. tour. And they were offered to headline Lollapalooza, but Joey was over it with his health issues. Yeah. I think that's a big reason. If you read Johnny Ramones book, like he couldn't get over that. That's why they yeah. didn't. I mean, they didn't talk for a multitude of reasons, mainly, you know, that he took Joey's girl, but that was oh, one yeah. of the reasons they especially didn't talk after the band broke up was like, it was like, this is our chance to really, you know, rancid and all these bands mm -hmm. are, here. this is our time. And they weren't able to do that. So yeah, the Ramones probably, I think. And it's funny because everyone loves the Ramones. You yes. Know? I mean, they're one of the most iconic, like if you just were to show a picture of a band to someone, yeah, the Ramones are one of those bands, like that 90% of people would be like, Oh yeah, that's the Ramones. Even exactly. if they can't name that many songs. I mean, most people can't name more than three Metallica songs and they're still playing like well, that's true. Yeah, 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 for sure. I To me, I think uh, typo negative. I've always been a just massive fan of yeah. them. And, and I understand why people, you know, don't care that much because it's weird as hell. But I mean, they're like, you know, they should they're like at their time. They're great. But I think they could have at least been bigger than Danzig at his prime. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Dude, uh, I, so I have a funny story actually about typo negative. So me and a friend used to get just hammered. And, yeah. you know, listen to like, just go on YouTube and like 
pull up videos over. And yeah. we went down a typo negative rabbit hole, which I hadn't really ever listened to him that much. And we were sitting there damn near crying, listening to like, love you to death. Just two bros yeah. hanging out <laughs> like kind of a weird night to be honest, but we're just hanging out, listening to this. And I'm like, dude, no matter what happens in life, we have to go see typo negative. In concert. 100%. So I, that night, or the next morning, wake up super hungover and I'm looking up. All right. When is typo negative going to be in Dallas? Find out Peter Steele has been dead for about 12 years. Uh, oh, shit. So I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Did, didn't know. Didn't know he was dead. Didn't even know he was sick. And uh, yeah. So, boy, we talk about the biggest. Sorry for your loss, down. bro. Yeah. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, I still haven't seen ACDC. And now it's like all my favorite members are gone. I want to see Malcolm. <sighs> yeah. So I don't know. You know? They're they're doing a reunion. Uh, I mean, not a reunion. They're doing an, another tour, I think. Yeah, but they have like the Jane's Addiction bass player, and then they don't have Phil oh. Rudd playing drums. Oh. So it's well, like that kind of. I will if I have the opportunity to see Angus. I will, but probably, you yeah. know, it's like to see Angus and Brian. You know, I know there is. I've never seen Priest either. I really need to see Priest. M me too. They are. Yeah. I think that's like number one on my bucket list so i saw the rolling stones a couple of years ago and then i'm going to see slipknot in like september those are like high up bucket lists of just bands i would have to see live but like rammstein is up there too just because like i mean the live show you don't time. gotta tell me twice yeah. bro i know brother oh man but like priest is so high up there which yeah. i would love to see megadeth too but i've seen megadeth like six times oh, man i man i would love to and slayer was up there too and then they stopped Touring. I saw Slayer one time. It was Anthrax, who I have an Anthrax set to, opening for Megadeth, opening for Slayer. Shit was crazy, dude. God. That's uh, you got a favorite movie? Jurassic Park. That's yeah, a good one. Seen it over 500 times. So you appreciate appreciate that reference, dude. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Do any. I know this is. This I is like Lost start. World. It's not as good as the first one, but I do like it. I actually, so this boy, I'm gonna. This is not a thing that most people will probably admit. I actually like the third one second most. I mean, obviously, wow. first one, nothing touches that. It's got better pacing than the second one. I love the third one. Like, I yeah. will watch the third one. I mean, now, granted, some of the acting, like well, old yeah. Bill Macy, not doing the best, is like, oh, wait, this is. It was just so clearly like a Hollywood afterthought, you know? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's not Spielberg. It was a uh, yeah. Ryan Johnson or Joe Johnson, whatever his name is. Like it's not a, you know, a, yeah, it's not the same. And then the Jurassic Spielberg world movies. The second one. Huh? Spielberg did work on the second he, one. He directed the second one. Yeah. 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 He directed one and two, but then he just produced, he's executive yeah. produced. You know, the I don't like the lost world ones. Hate sorry. them. Or Jurassic world. Yeah. Yeah. I Jurassic hate them. World, yeah. Hate them. I think they're, horrible like too yeah. much cgi that somehow looks worse than the cgi in 1993 totally uh, which totally I, I don't get that because there's you no know. practical effects to like balance it out you know that's yeah, you why know. i like the phantom menace of all the prequels it's like oh yeah when you watch yeah. an unedited phantom menace like an original print or something i've seen yeah. it on film it look regardless of the movie it looks fascinating the sets yes. are all real you know the character design is great and if there's something about like the cleaning it up for 4k or blu-ray that mm -hmm. makes it look worse but yes. i watched it with the film grain it's like the cgi looks fantastic and it's an original print yes Dude, but I, then yeah it does yeah, it, you know. it, it ruins it like the there it's because cgi is so much easier to use now that it's almost like they just kind of half-ass it whereas you yeah. couldn't do that in the 90s like yeah you, and it's also it's like it's like, I think it really starts with Attack of the Clones. It's the first one. It's one of the first films entirely filmed on digital. Yeah. As well as it being the first overtly CGI movie ever made. God. You know, yeah. and, and it, it looks, looks like horrible. It, so. yeah. 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 You know, Adam Jones from Tool was one of the guys that was the, that did the CGI in Jurassic Park. Oh, sick. I didn't know that. Yeah. He I was watched so... that documentary about the, the practical effects. Oh, he's in that life. documentary. I didn't realize that. Yeah, so the they tool. showed they showed two of the dudes, or I think maybe just one guy, working on the computer and showing like how they're doing the T Rex chase and everything. And it's Adam Jones from that's cool. sick. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. know. My favorite movies are like Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Oh, that's a great uh, one. Uh, aliens. I'm a stand for Aliens. Do you like it's it more than Alien? Alien? Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's a better movie. I just enjoy it more. You know what I mean? There's a big difference. Because, yeah. like, to me, the greatest movie is not Jurassic Park. It's just my favorite movie. Yeah. To me, the greatest yeah. movie is uh, Apocalypse Now. 
like I just, would go with Apocalypse Now or like one of the first two Godfathers. Yeah, you know? like just but then I also perfect love like movie. heavyweights and like cool runnings and <sighs> you know like heavyweights is and growing up yeah. being a you know a little fat kid, heavyweights really hit home, and I love that movie. You know, so it's the much. first Judd Apatow movie. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. I know. I watched it a while back, and his name, you know, on the credits, I was like, oh damn, I didn't know Judd. That's Apatow like when you're watching Cool Runnings and you find out Hans Zimmer did the score. Did he really? Yep. I feel All that like steel drum shit is Hans Zimmer. That's. A, I feel like if you just ask him nicely. He'll do your movie score. Yeah, and he's done so. Like, if you go on his, I met IMDb, him one time. He was super nice. Um, I I love Hans Zimmer. Like, I yeah, I didn't I, know it was him till he I was at Coachella backstage. Mm -hmm. We were performing. Uh, and he was talking to somebody I knew, and I went up and I talked to him. I didn't realize it was him. I like interrupted this conversation, and three hours later, I'm like, let's go see Hans Zimmer play, and I'm like, oh. Right. That's oh, it. Oh, dude. He is. Which probably made him feel better because it was like I didn't kiss his ass, you know? Right. Oh, I'm but sure that, yeah. Thank you for your work on Cool Runnings, my dude. It's excellent. <laughs> dude, I actually, I really love the score for like True uh, True Romance, which is him mm -hmm. also, but I love that. Like, it was still, dr no, it's not still drums. It's uh, whatever, xylophone ish. Uh, yeah, but yeah, the Rimbas. The, but Rimbas. Like, yeah, yeah. Also, anything with Nick Cage, Face <sighs> Off, Vampire's Kiss. But... Oh, man. Yeah, is, but is face off your favorite Nick Cage movie? I don't have a favorite. I it's yeah. probably the mine's, one I've seen the most. Mine's eight millimeter, which is yeah. I don't know what that says about me, but boy, I love it. No, dude, movie. everybody's got their own taste in Cage. It's yeah. like <laughs> it's like some people love leaving Las Vegas, some people love raising Arizona, some people love oh, you know Mandy. Damn. So Mandy was great too. Yeah, raising Arizona. I, I kind of forget. I love about them that. all, dude. I do what I call the Nicolas Cage match, which is like I'll go into Netflix and watch whatever. Straight to VOD cage movie there is. Dude, but I watched that. I watched one not that long ago where he's like some beach bum. Uh, it came out like two years ago. And he's like some beach bum who somehow has like the fighting skills of John Wick. He's basically like Jimmy Buffett, John Wick combined. Oh, I got to see. I know which one you're oh, talking about. Maybe I'll watch that today. Boy, it is. I mean, it might be one of the worst movies I've ever seen, but also yeah. one of the best. So, which well, is Nicolas Cage's career. So. Dude, I mean, listen, he's on a comeback. I did see The Unbearable Way to Massive Talent like four times. Incredible. So. Incredible. But listen, dude, I got to yes. run. I know. It's, I pushed but, uh, the time on this one. No, yeah. dude, I was down to chill harder. Uh, I got another thing I got to do in 10 minutes. Absolutely. But Dude, no dude, worries, awesome man. Awesome chilling. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So let me uh, – oh, and uh, before you go, plug, promote, anything you'd like. Where can people find you? All that good stuff. Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, listen, just Google Ben Katzman, my Instagram, my Twitter, my TikTok, BKDegreaser69. Uh, I'm just always putting out music. You know, if anything, that's my favorite thing to share with the world. I put out a new song called Fire Sprite and Rolling Stone a couple weeks ago. And, uh, you know, do that. Hell Whatever yeah. you like. I have a record, Transcendental <laughs> Shreditation. I think it's my best riffs I've ever made. It's like the second coming of kill them all, you know? God. So that's awesome. You know, man. whatever you check out, I'll be honored. Even if you only listen to this interview, we're good. Hell yeah, man.